Hello, Ka Edu. From the last episode, the place and values of literature manifest its huge role in the academia. It also traced the historical development of oral and written forms with the purpose of engaging readers to the world of various genres. Module 2 includes the verbal and visual elements of children and adolescents' literature, particularly on the inclusion of special literary texts from the popular oral culture such as lullabies, parables, stories, plays, poem. Everything written by poets and authors for these readers. Know the child. The best teachers know their students well. For instance, you will find it helpful to know your students, their long-term and short-term interests, their home environment, family makeup, siblings, pets, their friends and social activities, their hobbies, their skills, athletic, academic, artistic, their hopes or plans for the future, and the kind of books they are currently selecting in free choice situations, such as doing library visits and while perusing classroom collections of trade books. Children's interests have been shown to be one of the most powerful motivating forces available to teachers and a grasp of students' reading and listening levels will provide the best selection of books for them. Often, children's abilities to read and listen are on a different levels. Young children in particular are able to listen to and comprehend more difficult material than they are able to read and comprehend. This difference is one that teachers accommodate by reading aloud more challenging books and providing a choice of easier reading material for students' independent reading. Roles of Children and Adolescent Literature Giving children access to all varieties of literature is extremely important for their success. The first value to note is that children's literature provides students with the opportunity to respond to literature and develop their own opinions about the topic. Quality literature does not tell the reader everything he or she needs to know. It allows for some difference in opinion. One reader may take something completely different away from the piece of literature than the next reader based on the two personal viewpoints and experiences. Second, children's literature provides an avenue for students to learn about their own cultural heritage and the cultures of other people. It is crucial for children to learn these values because Developing positive attitudes toward our own culture and the cultures of others is necessary for both social and personal development. Children's literature also encourages creativity. Children's literature is of value because it fosters personality and social development. Children's literature can foster social development by encouraging students to accept other people and their differences. Children's literature can also encourage students to develop relationships with people, encouraging social contact. Finally, children's literature is of value because it is a timeless tradition, one in which books are the major means of transmitting our literary heritage from one generation to the next. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another, his mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up, so he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room a forest grew, and grew, and grew until his ceiling hung with vines, and the walls became the world all around and an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day and in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are and when he came to the place where the wild things are they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws till Max said be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once, and they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. 
and made him king of all wild things. Stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper, and Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely, and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around from far away across the world he smelled good things to eat, so he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go! We'll eat you up, we love you so. And Max said no. The wild things roared their terrible roars, and gnashed their terrible teeth, and rolled their terrible eyes, and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat, and waved goodbye, and sailed back over a year, and in and out of weeks, and through a day, and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still 